Unlike the other transformations, move and rotate, you can't make copies directly with the scale tool. However, the scale tool is also a very powerful one, and it allows you to not only resize objects, but reproportion them and actually do some modeling, depending on how we use it. So let's do a little tutorial to understand how scale works. Draw a circle from the origin point and give it a two foot radius. Push pull the circle up, forming a cylinder with a 12 foot height. I'm going to zoom in on that. Triple click to select everything and press S for scale. So the green handles allow you to scale the object in many different ways. The corner handles default to scale the object uniformly, which means equally in all three dimensions. It scales the object about the opposite corner, down here. So if I grab this corner, I'm going to be making it smaller towards that opposite corner. If I grab it from over here, it's going to go towards the other side. Notice that the box kind of jumps when it gets to a scale of 0.5, and again at 1. If you grab a handle which is in the middle of a face, you can scale in one dimension only. So I can just make the cylinder taller or shorter. If I grab it from this handle, I'll be distorting the form and making it an elliptical cross section. Down here it says red scale, 1.5. I can change that number by typing in something and pressing enter. If you grab a handle over here, you can scale in two dimensions. So I have two numbers to deal with, and they're separated by a comma. So I can type in 0.5 comma 3 to make a certain type of ellipse. You can even access three degrees of freedom by holding down the shift key on a corner point. Notice the tooltip changed from uniform to red, green, blue scale. Now I can scale in three dimensions at once. The measurements toolbar has three different numbers and they're separated by commas. The option key changes the way the handles scale. Normally the handles work about the opposite point. If you hold down Option, it scales about the center, so you can keep your object centered on the axis. If I wanted to make this a larger column, but maintain a circular cross-section, I could use one of these side handles, hold down the Option key so that it stays centered on the blue axis, drag it out, and then type in equal values in red and green. I can type 2 comma 2 to scale it up evenly in those two dimensions. You can actually use the scale tool to scale parts of objects. So for example, I'll select this top circle and press S. We only get one set of handles. Now I'll scale it down about the center point by holding the option key down. And I can therefore taper the cylinder making it a truncated cone. Scale can also be used to mirror objects. For example, let me zoom out to get some more room on the screen. I'll select this entire object and press S for scale. I can flip it over by dragging this handle all the way down through to the other side until I get a scale of negative one. Now we have a mirror image of the object. However, what if I wanted a copy instead of just the mirror image of the original? We can't use the option key to indicate a copy like we can with the move and rotate tools because Option performs a different function in the Scale tool, that is, to scale about the center point. Let me undo and go back here. So the key to creating a mirror is to first move the object and make a copy of it by using the Option key. Then use the Scale tool and drag it down through a scale of negative 1. Then use the Move tool again to move the object up so that it matches up with your original object. Another approach is to flip an object along an axis. I'm going to undo a couple of steps so we have two copies of the object. Then I'll select this copy, right click, and choose Flip Along Blue Direction. Essentially that's like scaling the object with a negative one multiplier. There's a third way to mirror objects and that's with a Ruby script that allows you to draw the mirror plane like you might in AutoCAD. I'll just demonstrate that. And we need to have a line here representing the axis that we're going to be flipping this along. And then I'll select the object and choose Mirror Selection. This is written by TIG. I'll click this midpoint to be the first part of my mirror line. 
and then I'll click this point along the red axis to determine this plane. Then I'll press return and I have the option whether I want to erase the original selection, yes or no. I'll say no and so effectively we left the copy behind. It's a little known fact that you can scale the entire model or just a group or component within the model using the tape measure. To demonstrate this, I'm showing you this modular unit that I designed some time ago for a kind of green prefab architecture. I'll use the tape measure by pressing T. Notice that there's a plus symbol next to the cursor. By default, the tape measure is set to create guides in SketchUp 7, and this is generally a good thing. Norm, I don't need the guide. I'm going to press Option to toggle out of that mode. And now the tape measure will merely give us a length value down here in the measurements toolbar. I'll click two points to make a measurement, and I'll do that here along this length. It says it's about 20 feet. Let's change that to 25 feet and press Return. We're prompted whether we want to resize the model. I'll say yes, and everything got bigger. Now everything got bigger, including the man, and that's not really what I intended. Let me go ahead and measure this person's height, generally from his foot to the top of his head, and he's over seven foot eight high. That's too tall. I'd like to shrink him back to about six feet high. I'll double click to open up that component for editing. Then I'll use the tape measure, press Option to toggle out of guide mode, make another measurement, and then change the value in the measurements toolbar to six feet. We're prompted whether we want to resize this group or component. I'll say yes, and he gets that much smaller. You can run into challenges when trying to scale objects that are at an angle with respect to the red-green axes. Take this engineered truss, for example. If I try to scale it using the SketchUp Scale tool, I get handles that are arranged according to the red axis and green axes. This doesn't really let me be accurate. If I try to do this numerically, something's going to get distorted. Undo. A better way to do this is to use Fredo's Free Scale tool. This allows you to scale according to the orientation of the object. So now I can scale it in this way. I don't need to worry about what angle the object is with respect to the axes. Undo. This tool is also supposed to work on curves on surfaces like this circle, for example. Let me go into this component and select this circle, which is drawn on this surface. I'll use the free scale tool. The orientation here is almost correct. I can make it bigger or smaller, but it's off with respect to the vertical axis. Undo. Perhaps a better way to approach this problem is to actually change the drawing axes. If I try the regular SketchUp Scale tool, this is the result, so that's not going to be very useful. Instead, what I can do is press Option A to reset the drawing axes, and I'll make them coincident with the component axes. Now I should be able to select that and use the regular SketchUp Scale tool to correct the problem. Let me reset the drawing axes by pressing Shift A. Another approach to scale is to select your objects and rotate them into an orientation which is coincident with the drawing axes. Then make a group or component of the object. Rotate it back into the orientation it was before and then use the SketchUp Scale tool. Its axes will be aligned with the object because the component or group was defined when it was oriented with the drawing axes. There's another tool on the Freescale toolbar that allows you to taper objects while you scale them. I'm going to unhide a sphere which I created earlier. I'll triple click the sphere to select all and then use this tool. It has this peculiar bounding box surrounding the object with green thick lines connecting all of the handles. This indicates that you can scale the bounding box itself to deform what's inside. There are two modes just like the SketchUp Scale tool. There's Uniform Mode and About Center. Press the Option key to scale about the center. 
Now I can scale this down and instantly make an egg by deforming the object with taper scale.